Kata is a chance for us to do live programming and to get to see some testing and development in action. And, and the point of a kata is that you repeat something over and over until you can do it with muscle memory. So I've repeated this presentation a couple of times, though not much talking was done, but we'll do some talking now. Uh, so tonight we're going to talk about, uh, we're going to implement the game of life. And you can see some examples of worlds that follow the rules of the game of life here. Uh, they're on Wikipedia. And basically it's this uh, two-dimensional board. And the rules are up here. So basically the rules depend on the neighboring cells. If you have fewer than two neighbors, you die. If you have exactly two neighbors, you don't, nothing happens to you. If you have more than two neighbors, you, or sorry, if you have three neighbors and you weren't alive, then you become alive. And if you have more than three neighbors, you die, because it's, it's too crowded. So uh, I have my editor set up with three different windows here. The top right window is where I'm running my tests. So that's, that's guard, and it's going to show the test output. In the bottom right, we have our tests that we're going to write. And in the top left, we have our code. So we'll get started by writing our tests. So we're going to make life. And it's going to be, I'm going to make it be a module. Um, but that's, we can get to that later. So I'm going to describe. Yes, sir. Thanks. I'm going to describe um, a function of my module, a method of my module. And it looks like it's. Based on the rules, it seems like it's pretty important to know about the neighbors of our world. So let's write that function first. So neighbors. All right, and then um, we're going to do this in a context because we might have multiple worlds that we want to deal with. So let's just do a simple world, one that has one cell in it. So world, one cell. And we're going to use a subject in this world. We're going to make the world be a subject again. And subject, and the way I'm going to describe the world is just a two-dimensional array. So we'll just start writing out the world here. It's going to be a pretty simple world, just a three by three world. Start with. So yeah, and so that's the world. And it kind of looks like same kind of thing as you have going on in these pictures here. So basically what I've decided is that these boxes will represent parts of my array, and then one will be a black box, and zero will be a white box. Or a, and one will be an alive cell, zero will be a dead cell. All right. So in this case, we uh, should specify that um, the cell has no neighbors. So we want to do we want to expect that life neighbors of the world. Okay, so yeah, now I'm gonna kind of add some parameters to this function. So I'm gonna say it takes the world, and then it's gonna take an x and y coordinates. So we'll say that. So that's the center. And we're gonna say expect that to equal <coughs> zero. Saving the file and setting using guard, it automatically runs my tests. And we can see up here it says undefined method neighbors. So let's go ahead and define that. Oh, and I, I want to use a module, so let's just change that too. Oh, is my font big enough? Font plain, I guess. Right. Right. So let's just do that. We're going to either change the message or make it pass. Let's see what happened. So, um,
All right, now we're getting expected zero got nil. Yeah, because I'm not returning zero. So we'll make that pass by returning zero. All right, and there we go. One example, zero failures, yay. All right, let's keep going. Let's specify that the neighbors have one neighbor. The neighbors of the alive set. <laughs> They would say call us all to specify better. Can you say live neighbor? Live neighbor has one sale. You already said call and call and neighbors. Oh. oh, whatever. Okay, anyway, those messages. Oh, the name. Oh, oh okay. All right, so let's do, yeah, let's look at the world. <laughs> let's look at the top left corner now, how many neighbors that has. So we want that to have one neighbor, because these, the rules are like, it's everything around the cell, including wrapping around the world. Um, so uh, there's eight neighbors for any cell. Like, all the zeros are a neighbor of the one cell in our world. So yeah, we should get one in this case. All right, but we got zero. We'll do something more fancy, I guess. Yeah, this isn't good enough. So let's do this. If the all right, so we're in this top left cell, and we want to check down into the right. So let's put, let's go, let's advance one in the Y. So going, by advancing one in the Y, we're going down. So we're saying Y is the first thing. And then um, we're going to go over one in the X, two. And so we're going to say if that cell, so this is the cell now that is the center of the world. We're going to say if that equals, if that equals one, we're going to return one, else we'll return zero. Was the order of the arguments? To this right here? Yeah. Yeah, it matters. So um, basically, you have an array, and when you access the it first time with this first bracket, it produces the, the, the first indexed array in the list of arrays. So there's array zero is the top row, array one is the middle row, array two is the bottom row. Okay. Right, right, so. Yeah. Okay, so pass, great. Um, let's look at the top, let's look at, let's go over one in the X, so now we're looking at the top of cell. We want that one to also be one. All right, but it's zero, two. And also, yeah, so I'll go ahead and do that. So, so this time we're just gonna advance the one, or the Y, well, the X is the same, we didn't change. So that passed, but I just have some intuition that this is wrong because I know that I'm trying to count up the number of neighbors, not not um, like just return one always. <laughs> so I'm gonna just do something. That, I'm gonna just do something here to solve that. So all right. yeah, this, well, it's sort of a refactor plus some intuition, I guess. All right, so we're gonna introduce some variable called sum, and we're gonna just say that this is. We're gonna say, we're just gonna change the order. Because this is, this is more like, I'll replace it. All right, so that is already factoring here, I guess. All right, so. Um, you're not returning it again. Oh yeah, thanks. Well, I'm um, returning a value. Yeah, I'm returning the value of the if, which, yeah. Okay, cool. So now that's passing, and we've kind of changed it around a little bit, and we're doing something more like what we should be doing. So let's let's keep going. Let's do some more. So let's do the top. Let's do the top right corner. So we're gonna go. Uh, so the top right corner is two zero. <coughs> And that, the way we get to the center from there is by going one, going plus one y and minus one x. All right, so that's also passing. So we'll keep going. We're gonna do the left, the left cell now. So that one is at zero x and one y.
And we're gonna skip over this all, we already did it. We are, we're gonna skip over one one. We'll just do two one. <coughs> So we're going to inject zero. That's going to be our base value. That's going to be like this line here, the first line. And we're going to pass. So what inject does is basically it loops over the array, and it takes along a variable with you along all the way that you can keep using to build up something. We're going to call that sum, because we're still building up like before. And then we have some offset array here that we're going to use. All right. So we're going to write in here. So we kind of have some x offset. We kind of have some x that we're trying to get to. So new x and some new y that we're trying to get to. Like basically we take y plus some offset and some x plus some offset and we get to something. So yeah, this, so new x is equal to x plus uh, offset of 0 we said that the first element of the array is, is the offset, so we'll do that. And then we'll do the same thing for y. All right, and then from there we can write that the, the sum is equal to, or actually, so then whatever this block returns is what gets passed as the next sum. So the last line here is what's going to be returned. So we'll, we'll take the sum from the previous iterations. 
plus um, the world spot, uh, new y, and new x. So basic, and since, since I've defined my cells to be 0 and 1, you can just use them that way. So we'll do it that way, instead of saying equals 1. All right, so let's do that. OK. Yeah. No return value. So an offset. Sorry, what? So an offset. Right. So. <clears throat> but sorry, what did you say? Your sum an offset. You say do sum comma offset. Yeah. That's okay. All right. Well, anyway, let me just keep going. So, what we. What we've noticed is that it's not working, and I believe, or so and we can look at which case it's not working in, right? So it says expect that world two, so when x is two, we expect that to equal one. Um, so what happened is when I changed, when I stopped using, um, so before when we were using world x, y, or sorry, y, x equals equals one, that was returning. That was returning false in the case where the where we were running off the array to the right. So before, when we were running off the array to the right, we, that was kind of hidden because that was equal to nil when that was happening. So basically, when we we're accessing the array at the off the end of the array, the array is returning nil, and some and that was getting hidden because we were using equals equals one before. So. It's the same problem that we were running into before when we added that in the bottom left corner. So what we need to do now is, is uh, figure out how to handle these cases where we, over, we overflow the array in the, to the right or to the bottom. And the way we do that is we just, um, so we, the way we do that is we first basically just look at the y, because that's the first array level when we're accessing our two-dimensional array. And what we do is we say, New y equals zero if new y is greater than world dot size. So world dot size is the number of rows in our uh, two dimensional array. So if that's greater, than, if new y is greater than that, we want to loop around back up to the top. And then we get a row from this. So the row is the world. new y. All right. And then we can check the x bounds based on that row. So we can say, if I can, I can make this up at the top. Right now. We'll check. That's what we'll have. We'll set them up and then we'll check the boundaries. All right. So then we'll say new x equals 0 if new x is greater than rows dot size. So if the row is too, if the new x is longer than the row, then we'll do that. You mean row instead of rows? Oh, yeah. Thanks. are passing, so we're not going over to the end anymore. And let's see if our new, if the two test I commented out is also <laughs> passing. All right, it's not passing. Why is that? Well, that's because we didn't add it in as one of these offsets at the top. And I guess we're getting, we've done five, so let's uh, quickly write in just all eight offsets. So, and maybe we can write them in a way that, uh, write them in a way that looks prettier so we can see them better. So. Maybe we'll write them as um, so. We'll write them as oh yeah. So this is like now we'll write them from the perspective of that center, the center cell, the cell we care about. So we'll write in the top left corner. We'll write negative y, negative x, and then that yeah, was we'll easier if I get rid of that. And then oh, and then we'll write zero for the x. Check the 
center one, so we'll get rid of that. And then, all right, so in this column, the x's aren't changing, right, but the y's are, so we should write zero, and this is positive one. In this column, the y's are changing. This is y. Anyway, okay, cool. So, uh, That's passing. And let's quickly write all the other ones that we're missing. So, or I'll just write one at a time. So, we want to do the bottom, most, the bottom middle cell. That one's passing. And the bottom right cell. Alright. And that's passing. Cool. So, it looks like we're doing pretty well for the neighbors function. I'm going to head some other tests for it. To a little bit more thoroughly, but uh, it's actually good right now, so we'll, we'll move on to the other part because my time is getting kind of low. Uh, so, <coughs> oh yeah. yeah, so it's passing. Let's write some more tests. So, I think we want to write a function to handle these rules that we have, so, and basically evolve this world to a new state. So, we have one state, and we want to move to another state, so let's do that. So, I'm going to describe a new function called evolve. Gonna start getting a little cool, maybe. So. All right. And the context of this, I'll just say, um, yeah, we'll, we'll just say the context for the starters is just a um, empty world. So that should. So if we have an empty world. kind of ugly, it's kind of hard to see the world here, and I knew I wouldn't have time, so I made a custom matcher that um, displays the world in a better way. So I'm not going to talk about it too much, but it just changes the way the arrays are displayed, so let's use that custom matcher. And the code is on GitHub, so you guys can do it if you want. You can look at it if you want later. So anyway, change it to equal world. All right, cool, there, it's a little bit better. Looks like the world. So now, yeah, we can just make this pass by passing the world back. All right, cool, that pass. But let's just, yeah, I'm running low on time, so let's just make, let's just go for it. <laughs> so let's make a blinker. It's kind of a big step forward, but it's the way I, the way I saw it when I did it, it wasn't. I don't know, it doesn't seem like that far. So, so a blinker is this guy here. And it needs to be on a 5x5 five five world. So we'll, or I think it needs to be on a 5x5 five five world. It does work on a 5x5 five five world. Uh, so we'll make that world for it. <coughs> All right. And then we'll draw both of the states of the world and then expect it to go between them. <coughs> So the first state is how we do the vertical state, and then we'll do the horizontal state. All right, then we should expect that world one should evolve into world two. All right, that failed. So I guess we're gonna kind of just go fast here. But if anyone has questions, let me know. So basically we wanna loop over all of the response in our world and make a new world 
based on the rules of the game. So we're going to need the indexes of things as we go along. So we'll do that. So we're going to do collect and dot with index. And this is a feature of chaining uh, enumerators that was added in 1.9, which is quite nice. So we'll use that. And uh, this is going to be the row and the y index. And then to do the x radius out here. And then it should be go. All right, so now we're looping over our thing, two loops. And in here, we need to write what should happen. So we're going to have a case statement based on the neighbors. So the neighbors of the world x, y. And here's where we're going to write the rules. So when, when it's 1, Sorry, when it's zero, or when it's one, or when it's anything greater than three, then the cell should be dead, or at zero. When the cell is two, then we should return the cell itself, so it doesn't change. When it's three, we return one, so that means it became alive. So it had three neighbors that brought it to life. All right, and the way this all works is it after this collect returns an array, and this inner one returns an array. So you basically get the right paper. Anyway, cool. So it's passing. Yeah. All right. So that's the whole game of life in Ruby. Yeah. Cool. So now I have, I have two more minutes, three more minutes. So I know you want to use questions, but I should show you guys the fun stuff. Because <laughs> right? I can make, let's make um, with this code or some code I used earlier, let's make uh, this thing, the Gosper Glider Gun. All right, so uh, yeah, let's do that real quick. So in two minutes? <laughs> yeah, that's the power of Git, right? I mean, I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna use Git, and then that's gonna segue into false stop. All right, so I have this branch here called showing off, or this uh, commit called showing off, so let's just check out that. Oh, my local changes are going to be overwritten. Hmm. Well, I know I have all. Of, I know I have good conversions. So, oh, well. <laughs> oh, I don't know. That didn't work. Let's. Oh no! Right. Let's, uh, let's <laughs> I didn't practice this part too much. Yeah. Part. yeah. So I copied that commit code. So you can just use that. Uh, yeah. Let's get out of guard. That's not fun. Oh, I stopped my shell. All right. Git check out that commit. All right, stash. Let's get rid of that stuff. We're gonna use some fancy things. That'll segue into false talk too. All right, now I'm on the showing off branch. And um, for the showing off version of the code, and we can go to the life.rb. Uh, oh, uh, so we have some extra functions here that are basically just like, just displaying things. And so we have some function here called blinker that simulates the blinker. Then we have someone for the glider wow. gun here. <laughs> and those ones and zeros in there? <laughs> yeah, that's not my problem. Uh, so, yeah, then you, then you just simulate. So basically, but then at the bottom, it's just the same code or something very similar. So let's let's uh, go down here, and then I think this will just work. Yeah, Yay. there we go. Wow. <laughs> Run it longer so it hits itself. Yeah, it will, that's right. Yeah, I, I, What's it called? I didn't want destruction of the thing. It's a bad shape. Yeah, yeah. beautiful. Yeah. 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 yeah, okay, yeah, I'm going to. So, uh, the simulate function takes results. So, it takes how many? Let's just run it a thousand times. All right. A thousand generations. Oh. Oh, it wraps around twice. Oh, there you go. It hit itself. <laughs> and then there's just some, yeah, there's some, there's some stable states that just sit around. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, 